How we doing, guys? Great, good, thank good. You. Look, Eddie Hearn, I want to jump right into it this weekend. Uh, Jamal Charlo had a victory against Montiel. And uh, no word of uh, Boo Boo Andre. <laughs> he, he mentioned Canelo. Uh, we all know Canelo. Yeah, and Golovkin. We all know Canelo's not coming down to 160 to fight. He's at 168. Um, first of all, what was your take on his performance and his post-fight interview? I haven't seen the fight in full. I mean, I was quite surprised it, it was as competitive as it was. Looked quite exciting, to be honest with you. And again, that was quite surprising as well. Um, how can you sit there or, or stand there in an interview after the fight and say, you know, it's time for me to unify the division? and only talk about one champion, like who's who's not gonna fight you because he's fighting, you know, in Japan. Like, why why is he not mentioning Demetrius Andre? He is an American undefeated world middleweight champion. And, it, and yet he's talking about two fights that we all know aren't gonna happen right now. So I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's, it's baffling really. And, you know, I feel for Demetrius because that is like, if we, if you talk about in the UK, if you had two guys from Britain that were the world middleweight champions, it's just, it's just what happens. They just fight in a unification fight. This fight has no barriers, no politics. Like, make the offer. It's a, it's a pay-per-view fight for you guys on Fox. It's two American world champions in a, in a middleweight unification. I don't know. I mean, this is a guy. This is a question you guys need to be asking them rather than yeah. a question I can ask them. But you know, that's <laughs> it's, it's baffling. When given the chance, we definitely will ask. But what about Mungia? He also had a, a a great performance this weekend. Yeah, but same thing, Barak. Jaime Mungia moved up from 154 to 160. When you move up the divisions as a champion with the WBO, you become mandatory, right? Yeah. Super, which he was. We've seen it with Alexander Usyk. Jaime Mungia was mandatory to Demetrius Andre. He turned that down, right? And it went to Liam Williams. That's what happened. Okay, you want to get a few fights in at middleweight first, I understand. Now, you've got another fight that can be ma get made automatically. Jaime Mungia against Demetrius Andre. And in that, in that sense, all you're doing, you're getting a shot at a world champion. So there's a chance for Mungia to become a two-weight world champion, but there's never even been a conversation about it because he's already turned it down. Now, you know, and that's one where we're both with the same platform. Wow. Yeah. 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 But you Eddie. know what? There was a bigger fight this weekend. I mean, probably the biggest fight in the world, and that's Chavez <laughs> Senior versus... I didn't uh, see that one Oh, yeah, I saw the Chavez Junior against... Uh, uh, Anderson Silva. Silver, Silver, and, and right. Anderson Silva. And he won. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was crazy. That's something that uh, probably boxing uh, hates, you know, because he kind of let us down. But something bigger than that to me, it was Canelo being invited by Chavez into the ring, you know, and, and both of their humble responses. But we already know that, you know, Mexico hasn't really accepted Canelo. Maybe this was the passing of the torch and maybe Mexico will accept Canelo now because Chavez just co-signed him. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that's a bit harsh that, you know, Mexico hasn't accepted him. I think he's a huge hero there. But th I do agree that, you know, there's always that, who is the greatest? Mm -hmm. You know, is it Chavez, is it Canelo? And they're both very competitive people as well, by the way. So I could imagine, you know, but that was a really nice sign of unity, I felt. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, I think that Canelo, one thing that is so pleased, pleasing, especially because I'm working with him, is you're just seeing the realness of, of Saul Alvarez. Do you know what I mean? Like you're seeing his personality, you're seeing his competitive instinct, you're seeing his kindness, you're seeing his compassion, you're seeing his, his father side, you're seeing him as a husband, you're seeing him as a competitor, you're seeing his humor. And I don't know how you can't love this guy. Like this, and, and I think that the weekend was really, you know, that was just saying, we're Mexico, right? You're a legend, I'm a legend, you're the past, I'm the now, I'm the future. And and like you said, Barack, you know, Chavez saying, you're the man, yeah. you know, and yeah. Canelo saying, no, 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 you're the man. You're the man. You know, and right. it, was, it was, I loved it, I loved it. And of course that leads us to 
our show, you know, with our partners, Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, in, back in Guadalajara this Saturday, live on The Zone, which is really exciting. I can't wait to get out to Guadalajara and just feel the energy out there, you know, yeah. and see those guys, and, and it's, it's great. Hey, are you realizing that, look, uh, you obviously grew up under your father and being uh, exposed to what boxing is in the UK. You know, 2018, you came to America. You know, now you're doing a deal with Canelo in Mexico. You know, those pretty much are the the, the three countries that boxing is biggest in, you know. Um, at what point did you say, all right, I don't want to just be big in the UK. I, I want to take over global boxing. At what point did that thought enter your mind? I guess when I started, it was more, you know, the competitive uh, element with my dad. You know, he was one of the biggest promoters of all time in the UK. Didn't really crack it in America, didn't have a broadcast deal in America. So that was something in my head, I've got to outperform him. You know, he's never done that. And then, you know, you look. I looked at the UFC and the brand and just thought, you know, we, we're a global business. We, we don't want to be, everyone just used to say, oh yeah, that Eddie Hearn guy, he's big in England. No, you know, I don't want that. I want to be big globally and I want to explore different countries. It's also given me selfishly the opportunity to travel the world and experience things. Like, I, I, and I'm not just saying this, but I think Mexico is such a wonderful place. Like, there's so much energy and passion for the sport of boxing, but for many things. But, you know, you go to a show and they're in there at three o'clock, you know, literally like the whole stadium come in to watch every undercard fight. They know every fighter. It's in their blood. Right. And, you know, that's for me, you know, fighters have legacy, but this is my legacy, you know, and yeah. selfishly, again, I want to change the game and I want to be someone that promoted shows in, in Guadalajara and Mexico City and Cancun and Tulum. And, you know, I want to break the Australian market and I want to, you know, do shows in Brisbane, in Queensland, you know, and that's just, that's what we do. That's fun. But this is exciting because... Yeah. The talent, the depth of talent is incredible. Because some countries you can go to and start doing shows, but you quickly realize like the talent's quite limited. You know, you've got some good fighters, but oh man, in Mexico, like these, there are so many unbelievable fighters. And this project is enabling the already established fighters like Julio Cesar Martinez, who will defend his world title at the weekend to fight at home but it will also enable the young talent to get opportunities where they don't, yeah. We've been having Mexicans come into our shows in the UK, they've been kicking our guys' butts, you know, like, and now they're gonna get a chance to grow in their own country and to become stars in their own rights. And of course, this passage and this path will enable us to get the best talent in Mexico, to develop them with, with Canelo Promotions and, and Eddie Reynoso, and also to bring them to the US and bring them around the world and change their lives. Can you explain that deal that you have with Canelo? Yeah, so it's, um, we're going to be doing a minimum of four shows in uh, Mexico per year with him. The first year, actually, we're doing four shows in six months. So this is the first one on Saturday. Uh, Julio Cesar Martinez defending his WBC flightweight title against Joel Cordova, uh, another Mexican. That's in Guadalajara. Then we'll be back there in August with another one and then probably October after the sales fight and then and then December. So keep it nice and busy. Um, you know, as well, guys, like they match their guys tough. Like Eddie Reynoso's got, I think, five fighters on the card and they're like, these guys are, I don't know, 15 and 0 or 16 and 0. I've looked at the other side, you know, the B side, and it's like 18 and 1, 17 and 0. Competitive and just, fights. But that, yeah, but that's their mentality. It's like, well, yeah. it's, we want a war. We want fun. We want excitement. And if my guy don't win, he don't win. Uh, has has Canelo? I mean, when's the last? What's the last conversation you and Canelo had about Caleb Plant in that fight? Is it really penciled in for September nineteenth, like people are saying? Yeah, we've um, we've now exchanged some some numbers uh, from our side. I'll see him on Wednesday to go through everything with him. Um, nothing's changed from from the process of. You know, we'll have an offer from the zone. I'm sure, we'll have an offer from Fox, and then it's what what everybody feels is best for the fighters. Um, so, no approach to Caleb Plant's team yet. No, nothing sent over. No, some discussions both sides, but that's really the purpose of this week to sit down and go through the financials and get things moving. Because after this week, you know, um, you're going to see Sal and, and Eddie Reynoso getting ready for camp. You know, heading back to San Diego. 
and preparing. So over the next week or so, they're going to want to know what's next. And, and you know, nothing's changed from all the teams that Caleb Plant is the one that everybody wants. Okay, so if Chavez Jr. comes to you and says, Eddie, I I'd like to sign with Matchroom, what do you say? I think the only person Chavez Jr. could fight at the moment is me. I mean, like, I, I think, and that's I, a loss. Mate, no, it's definitely not a loss. I'm, I'm the, I'm I, the, I don't know. At this point, nothing, nothing would surprise me with Chavez Jr. I'm the safest comeback fight for Chavez Jr. Dude. Yeah, it was a wild one, wasn't it? I mean, uh, uh, you know. So we had we had Michael Hunter on Eddie, and uh, according to him, he feels like uh, Anthony Joshua will be easy work for Alexander Usyk. Really? How do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah, I just spoke to AJ uh, five minutes ago. Actually, I was talking about the fight. He's really excited about the fight because he feels that it will give him respect and credibility mm -hmm. when he beats Alexander Usyk. And I said to him, you know, this he knows he knows how good Usyk is. You know, Rob McCracken who is his trainer, watched Usyk for years in the WSB, winning golds in the Olympics. So we're, we're under no illusions. But, you know, I just said to him, you know, don't overthink this fight. You know, you start getting into, oh, Usyk's this, he's the matrix, you know, he did right, yeah. right, right. Oh, mate, listen, you've got to respect him as an outstanding fighter, but you've also got to use your attributes and you've got to go in there and dominate him. You know, but it's a tremendous fight. And actually, you know, the closer it gets, which, you know, September 25th looks like the date for that fight, it, it's nerve wracking because he's a pound for pound great, Alexander Rusi. Uh, uh, before we get out of here, Eddie, real quick, uh, did you see uh, Naoya Naoya Inoue's performance? And do, do you feel like he, he is on a cusp of being a global star himself? No, definitely not on the cusp of being any kind of global star because unfortunately, he doesn't have the global profile and and unfortunately he's in a weight division that doesn't really warrant that. I mean, you know, you don't really see, and, and by the way, it's no fault of their own because he is a pound for pound powerhouse. I mean, he's fantastic, but to, you know, to become a global star, you have to encapsulate the casual audience. And I promise you, you could walk down, I mean, it, you know, UK is a, a very experienced, knowledgeable boxing market. You could walk down the street and talk about Innova and no one would really understand who he is. That's because one, he's being broadcast at five o'clock in the morning and not a lot of people are watching, but also it's because he's a bantamweight. And you know, us as boxing, I love watching Innova. I mean, I watched him live uh, beat Rodriguez. It was, it was unbelievable. And I know Das Marina, so whatever his name was, isn't the greatest fighter of all time, but it's just, it's the, it's the footwork, it's the power, it's, he's extremely exciting. But, yeah. you know, global stars are a bit strong, but, you know, pound for pound, great. Yes, right. um, uh, uh, you know, he, he deserves that respect. It's just very difficult for those smaller guys. I mean, look, you know, if Estrada and Chocolatito were middleweights, right. that trilogy <laughs> would be one that the world would stop and watch. And it, it should, should be, it should be. It you should know, be. Inoue should be a global star, yeah. but hell of a long way to go. All right, thanks, Eddie, as always, man. See you next week. Cheers, guys. Take care.